I've been uh, requested to explain how the mechanism works on one of these old vintage Panasonic tape recorders. This one here that I have is a model RQ2107 and this thing's got to be at least 30 years old, more than that. Go back to the 70s. Just so happened to have one of these old uh, beasts in my collection of old equipment. So, I don't even know if this works. I think this tape recorder probably still works. Because they don't make stuff like they used to back in the 70s and even into the 80s. But what this used to be used for when I had it was um, back in the very early days of computers. Before we had floppy disks, we actually stored our programs on cassette tapes. And that is what this was used for. This was the actual recorder that I used for um, data storage. And I actually had to modify it. That's what these wires are here. These are to shut off the motor so that the computer could start and stop it because it didn't have a remote pause on it. It just had the mic and the, uh, had the input and the output, the microphone and the external speaker. I used to use this with an old Texas Instruments TI-99-4A uh, home computer to record and, or to store and read the uh, programs that I would write for it. So, got the back off this thing. We're going to pull the mechanism out and we're just going to take a look at uh, how this thing operates. Uh, these units are pretty, pretty simple. We'll open it up and the mechanism should just lift straight out of the uh, the case. There it is. We'll go through the operation of the mechanics as that's what I've been asked about is how does the fast forward and rewind engage. So let's just take this thing, take a look at it in a little closer detail and see how this thing actually operates. Okay, first thing you notice this plastic slide plate here. This is your lock that locks each of the mechanism pieces in place. So when you go through the different modes you'll see that this lever which is actuated by a spring, there's a spring that's right down in here. I can point at it. There's a spring that's right down in here that pulls this piece back. It pushes it to the right. This little switch over here is what activates the motor. So when you're in the various modes, play, fast forward, and rewind, it locks the switches in place. And it's, it's they're all going to be the same as this area here. There's a, a little catch in here when you put it into a specific mode, like when I put it into record, for example, you'll see the little black, see, see the little black lever there that it locks it in place. And that's what holds the button down. Right here. That's what holds that in place. When you press the stop button, it releases it. Fast forward and rewind, there's two more levers on the bottom, but this is the, it's the same lock lever that locks them in place, you see? There's the rewind, and there's the fast forward. Now if we turn the mechanism around, we'll see that on the bottom side, when you press the, the various buttons, stop is this one. When you press the fast forward and rewind button, it moves the various levers in place. If we want to see the operation of what they actually do, I need to take out the uh, capstan shaft. So we'll take off the belt. And I'm going to remove the capstan shaft so we can see the actual working of the actual mechanism itself. It's a very, very simple system the way this is laid out. On the bottom of the flywheel, this is the capstan flywheel, and this is where you would, you would oil this here, by the way, the capstan shaft, this is the bearing. There are two gears. One gear here, this one is engaged when you put the unit into play. You'll see that this metal gear here engages against that small 
and you'll see that's this gear that's over here this gear here when you put it into play or record the mechanism moves over this metal lever releases this gear lever assembly which is pulled in place by a spring which is right in here a little spring right there that pulls this over engages this wheel into the take-up spool which is driven from the inner gear uh, that drives or it drives this wheel anyway drives this gear which turns the take-up spool this is the auto stop mechanism here when the wheel is turning when the tape gets to the end this little lever presses down when the tape tension comes up and that kicks over and will turn the mechanism into stop it'll it'll activate here this lever which is the same as pushing stop so if I put it into play and this is turning and this lever comes down from the tape hitting the end there's a cam on here you'll see it it catches and pushes that over and it releases the mechanism that's the auto stop on this type of mecha mechanism on more advanced systems when the reel stops turning there's another little cam that Get, it activates but on these really simplistic systems it's all mechanical fast forward and rewind is all on the bottom so if I turn the mechanism around here when I go into fast forward and rewind you'll see what happens when you press so which one's fast forward and which one? this one's rewind so when I press this button down here to go into rewind you'll see what it does this lever pushes on this lever which moves those two gears into that position this is now driven by this outer ring gear which spins the rewind spool and fast forward is the opposite it pushes it the opposite direction so now it's driven directly from this wheel this this cog assembly meshes with the ring gear and turns the take up spool just like that going into rewind it goes the opposite direction engages with this cog it's a pretty pretty simple system you've got a couple little springs here that are used to pull back the play and the eject lever that's this one here this is the eject lever here and this is the stop lever so there's a little spring that that puts tension on to pull them back there's another little spring here which engages between the fast forward and the rewind levers as you can see to pull them back to the resting position and then this is the play the play lever here this other last one over here is the record lever and what the record lever does when you press the record button down in addition to pushing down the play there's a little metal spring clip mounted on here and what that does is that presses this switch over here this is the record play switch so when the switch is in its normal rested position like this it's in playback mode when it switches like that it basically switches the amplifiers around and instead of connecting the output of the amplifier to the speaker it connects it to the record playhead and the input to the amplifier is connected to the microphone input when the switch is in the normal mode the input to the amplifier is connected to the record playhead and the speaker is connected to the output of the amplifier and it also turns on the erase head which is a, just an electromagnet it just turns on power to that head to erase it this is a DC bias system this one here we're not where there's no bias amplifiers or no oscillators or anything this is just a straight single actually two ICs um, basic DC recording very very simple mechanism so if you've got a problem with one of these things it's going to be probably one of these plastic pieces is either broken or worn or it's going to be a spring that has come off 
take out the switch assembly. Uh, I think it just pops out by pulling it out like that. If you lift it out on one side, the whole switch assembly probably will just pull right out and then you can pull the switches off or pull the individual levers off and pull it out like that. Okay, now you can see what each one does. This is the, the, the lock catch. If I push the heads up, you'll see how they move that. So each one of these is going to have a little catch to lock each, each piece in. And then on the bottom of these, there's fingers that go into, and they lock into here, which is what they push. Right? These are, these are what they push up here. To put this assembly back together, which is a reversal of what we did to take it apart, make sure that my record switch is in there like that. And we just take each of the each of the uh, little levers and put them in the appropriate place. Line each one up. And push the shaft back in. Now our levers are, are all back together. Then we put the flywheel with the two gears that are part of it back in place. Drop the flywheel in place. Put the belt around the flywheel. The belt has probably seen better days, but hey, it's uh, it survived all these years without uh, melting and then the top piece of the bearing here goes into into the top of the capstan assembly we put our three screws back in Reattach our circuit board. One screw that holds the circuit board in place. So there's a little alignment pin over here that holds the circuit board in place, and then there's one screw that goes in there. Tuck our wires back out of the way here. Wires snap into this little holder assembly on the side here. There's a couple little catches just to hold the wires out of the way. They go in like that. Like that. Just mechanism drops into place. Just like that. And then the back just goes on. There's nothing to hold the board in place. It's held in place by the actual. Oh, and let's not forget. Let's not forget the carry handle. Cover just snaps back on like that. It slides together. Very easy to put these together and take them apart. 
but then what do you expect this tape recorder probably was only twenty dollars when I bought it and that would have been I don't know 1980 or 81 I guess when I bought this thing to use as a computer storage device maybe 1980 I'm trying to think it was a long time ago I've still got that computer too maybe one of these days we'll haul that old computer out and see if I can actually load a program from a cassette tape wouldn't that be something anyway that's the disassembly and reassembly of an old Panasonic cassette tape recorder and it still works I don't have batteries for it or I'd let you hear it play but trust me it works see you in the next one